Hello and welcome again to my channel. So, quick recap before we start. So, in the previous episode, we talked about this comprehensive problem where Baby G wanted 1.5 million cash to buy a car at the end of year 5 and a small house worth 1 million at the end of year 4 and another 1 million at the end of year 3 to fund his business venture and lastly 500,000 to fund his wedding expenses. So to afford all of those, he needs to invest yearly at the end of each year. So, in the previous episode, we computed such investment per year and this was our solution. So, in today's video, we need to prove that our answer is correct, that this is correct, okay? Because that is my promise in the previous episode and I also promised to introduce another type of solution, if you can still remember, and the third promise that I made is to let you see the five questions that were originally asked related to this comprehensive problem. Now, before I begin to deliver my promises, if you wanted to see the previous episodes, their links are on the description below. But if you are updated with the episodes in this current series, then let's start. So first, let's prove that our solution works, okay? So let's change this R's here to 730,645, okay? Now, let's complete the timeline and see if this here at the end of year 5 will really become zero or become very close to zero because if it is, then we are sure that we got the correct answer, okay? So let's start. So we have 730,645 times 1.08 equals 789,097 plus another 730,645 equals 1,519,742. So that's the balance at the end of year 2 times again 1.08. And we will have 1,641,321 plus another 730,645 but minus 1 million because baby G is to get this amount already to make it a capital for his business, right? So we will have 1,371,966 as the balance for the end of year 3. Now, Multiply that again by 1.08 and we will have 1,481,723 plus the fourth 730,645 but minus 1,000,000 for the house and 500,000 for the wedding expenses equals 712,368 times the final 1.08 and we will have 769,357 plus the final 730,645 and minus 1.5 million for the car equals 2. Again, this is supposed to be 0, but the 2 is very immaterial. So just let it be, okay? So that's just the result of rounding off this 730,645 that we computed and the rounding off of these balances here and here. Okay? So regardless, we have proven that BBG should really invest 730,645 every end of the year for five years to afford this one to four here. So... That's it for the proof. Up next is the alternative solution. So stay tuned. So as I have told you, this is only one of the solutions to this comprehensive problem. And in here, we use the present value ordinary annuity in computing for the investment per year. Well, solution number two is actually using the future value. 
So instead of present value factor here and the present value here, we are going to change them to future value factor. And in here, we have the future value amounts. Okay? So the R will remain the same. The R will remain as the unknown. So in here, instead of 1 minus 1.08 raised to the power of negative 5, it will become 1.08 raised to the power of positive 5. Again, the N will become positive 5. And after that, we have minus 1 after it. Okay? So if you did not spot the differences, let me give it to you specifically. So in present value, the 1 minus is placed before the 1 plus i. Okay? Unlike this future value, where the minus 1 is placed after the 1 plus i. And the second difference is that the n is negative in the present value, while in here, in the future value, it's positive. So, although both of the future value of 1 ordinary annuity and the present value of 1 ordinary annuity, they should be divided by i. Okay, so that's their similarity. So again, the future value ordinary annuity factor can be extracted using this 1.08 raised to the power of positive 5 minus 1 divided by 0 0.08. And actually, we will have a factor of 5.8666-0096 times R, which is equal to 5.8666-0096R. Now, again, Similar to the problem that we have encountered in the previous video, we cannot have two unknowns. So we have to put an amount here. But how do we do that? So if you remembered, in solution number one, what we did is get the values of this 1 million, this 1 million right here, and this 500,000, and finally, this 1.5 million in this beginning of year one here. So as if we worked back, right? You remember that, right? So in this solution number two, we will be working forward, okay? So what I mean is, we are going to get the value of this 1 million at the end of year five. So you can have it 1 million times 1.08, and after that, times another 1.08, and we will get already the value of this 1 million at the end of year 5. Or you can have this 1 million times 1.08 raised to the power of positive 2. Or 1 million times 1.1664. And you will get a future value or the value of this 1 million after 2 years of 1,166,400. Okay? So that's what I mean as working forward. Okay? So these two, this 1 million and 500,000, so that is worth 1.5 million, will become 1.5 million times 1.08 raised to the power of positive 1, which is still 1.08. And we will have a value of 1,620,000 at the end of year 5. Okay? And lastly, we have 1.5 million here times 1.08 raised to the power of 0 or 1 because any number raised to the power of 0 will always be 1. So 1.5 million times 1 equals 1.5 million. Okay? And logically, besides that, you don't actually need to solve the 1.5 million. So... It is because this 1.5 million is already 1.5 million at the end of year 5, right? So, anyways, these are the future values of these amounts. So, what we need to do next is we need to get the sum of all of this. And if we did, we will get 4,286,400. So, now, that's the amount that we are going to use here. Okay? And because of that, we can already find the R. It's just 5.8666-0096R equals 4,286,400. So 
So, let's divide both sides with 5.8666-0096 and we will have R on the left side. So, that's the only one remaining. And on the right side, we have 4,286,400 divided by 5.8666-0096 and that will be equal to 730,645 still. So, the same with um, the R in our solution number one. Okay? So, that's solution number two. So, at this point, let's cut this lecture. So, we are going to do this in order to keep this video short. Okay? So, let's have the five original questions in the next episode. So, if you've learned, please click like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. And also select all to be updated on my next videos. So thank you for watching and see you on the next one.